4 says, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Where were you during the foundation of the world? We were in the mind and the heart of God. So when God came down here, he came down here for a special people, y'all. And I'm thinking and praising God that I'm one in the number that God came down here to save. Somebody up there, God, praise. Tonight, if you will permit me, I'd like to talk just for a few moments on the subject of a love call agape. This is a God kind of love. And when you talk about love, everybody already, you know, is an expert. I know all about it. But if you listen tonight, you're going to find out that this is a higher order of God. And I don't think we can ever attain it, but we should forever be trying to reach this kind of love that God has displayed for us. What is love? Webster Dictionary say love is a strong feeling or attachment or attraction to something or someone. The Bible in 1 John 4 and 16 says that God is love. Now, I don't know whichever definition you take. Love will compel you to give yourself to the person, place, a thing that you're in love with. Amen. The Bible tells us in 1 John 2 and 15 to love not the world because there's something in love that will make you give yourself to the world because love compels you to give. When I was coming up, my brothers and, and my cousins, they, they, they gave me, they, they gave me the school about how to date. And they told me, say, boy, don't you ever give your money to no woman or to no girl. Not only would they use you, but they would abuse you. So Mary, I took his advice, and every time I took a girl to the movies, we went Dutch. And if we couldn't go together, I would be in the movie waiting on her with my popcorn in my hand, waiting to sit down with her because I couldn't give her no money. But God, lo and behold, I met May, Catherine, Tangela, Andrew. And y'all know the story. Not only did she get my money, she got my car keys, she got my credit card, she got my house, because love compelled me to give myself and my possessions to her because I loved her so. Amen. You can't love without giving. Amen. You can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. That's the true test of whether or not you love me. What have you given me? And I ain't talking about no money, y'all, but I'm talking about a friendly hello. I'm talking about a shake in the hand. You see, love ain't nothing but a muscle. In order for that muscle to grow, you got to exercise it. And God expects us to be looking for actors to exercise our love. And glory be to God. The love that made me give everything to me, <laughs> car keys, is the love called agape. It's a God kind of love. Somewhere between the day of Pentecost and now, we the church have redefined the meaning of love to that of the word. Now, we love in word. You hear it all the time, man, I love you. Brother, I love you. Sister, I love you. But we don't love in deep. Oh, Lord. We have robbed the power that God intended love to have in the body of Christ. Now this love called agape is the highest form of love, but it cannot be confused with filial love. 
Filial love is a friendship love. It's a love of reciprocity. In other words, I help you if you help me. In other words, I take you to the store if you buy me gas. I know I'm all in your house and I'm all in your business because that's the way the church loves. I come help you to put up your door, but I want you to give me a couple of dollars. This is the type of love that God is talking about. Brother Coles told us that God loved us so much that he came down here and died for us. Whether or not we loved him back. Amen. This is the kind of love that God is looking for in this day. So there are three demonstrations I want to say to you about love, and I promise you, I'm out of your head. <laughs> First, we want to talk about God's agape love for the saints. Yeah. Then I want to talk to you about the saints' agape love for God. And last, I want to talk to you about the saints. I got their love for saints. Oh, when we look at God's I got their love for the saints, we know John 3 and 16 says that God so loved the world that he what? Hey, you can't I got their love without giving you That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, that doesn't seem to a natural man that God did a whole lot because it's like me saying, I love Mary so much that I'm going to let Mary go and die for her. Oh, I love Mary, but the biggest sacrifice would be for me to die for Mary and not Mary to die for Mary. Therefore, you got to look at 1 John 3.16 that says, Hereby perceive we the love of God, for God laid down his life for us. Yeah. It was God, y'all. The Son of God was just the flesh of God. And God used to take to Calvary to die for our sin. So we see the sin is the problem. That God says that all souls of mine. And the soul that sinned, it shall die. It was no way to make this thing except the Lamb come and die for us. For when we were born, the Bible says, we were shaped in iniquity and in sin did our mothers conceive us. In other words, we were born with the symptoms of death over our heads. If Christ didn't come, all of us will be in hell. So God came and he looked at the wages of sin being death. Let's stop there for one second. Everybody's going to die physical death. That's not what we're talking about. Physical death is our body and our spirit separating when our body dies. The body goes back to the dust and the spirit goes back to the Lord who gave it. Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. But spiritual death is a separation of our spirit from God's spirit. Glory be to God. A person who does not have the Holy Ghost is alive but he's still a dead man walking. Because spiritually he's not in connection with God. So when you look at a person who is spiritually dead, you try to tell him that God came down here and died for you. And he said, it's expedient that I go away, that I send this comforter to you. And he is free to anybody who wants it. So why be walking around here spiritually unconnected when God has already provided for you? The Holy Ghost. That will connect you directly to the Son of Glory be to God. So if there's anyone in here who doesn't realize that you need the Holy Ghost or you dead, and he comes with the evidence of speaking in another tongue, 
we got time after service. Christmas Day, that Jesus was born, that you can be born again. It's just that simple. And then he's talking about this eternal death. That is spiritual death that passes and continues after physical death. You don't want to, glory be to God, die without a spiritual connection. Right. You don't want that. Yeah. Because if you die without the Holy Ghost, you're going to be eternally lost. Turn with me quickly to Luke, the 16th chapter. Glory be to God. Verse number 22. Sixteen, Luke sixteen, verse number twenty-two. There we go. <laughs> and it came to pass that the day that died and was parented by the angels and paid grand bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Next verse. And in hell. He lift up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Right. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am torment in this land. Yeah. But Abraham said, Son, remember thou that thou in thy lifetime received the good things, and likewise Lazarus, evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Verse number 29, I believe. It's 27. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. Verse number 28. For I have five brothers, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Here is a type of hell. I don't believe it's a parable because Jesus used names. But anyway, you find three things. Number one, that the brother was in torment, in flame. He was burning, but he was not consumed. Number two, he had a memory. If anybody in here ain't straight, anybody in there have not been born of the Lord and the Spirit, and you meet this faith, you're going to remember me on yeah. Christmas night in 2019 that I was telling you, take a little time to get your future yeah. together. Right. While I bet you have life insurance, I bet you have car insurance, I bet you, you have insurance on your kids, you've got to take time to put insurance on your soul. Yeah. He sends a message from hell. He said, I got five brothers. I want you to send them to tell them, you don't want to come. Well, if I want to save, I will get saved again. <laughs> I, I made this stuff to baptize me again just to be sure. He said, this the message. Tell them, you don't want to come here. And, and Abraham said, oh, if they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, yeah. neither will they listen to one, even if you came from the dead. Now, y'all know that. If a man runs through here, all sizzling and stuff, Larry's going to come and grab him and throw him out the side door. Ain't nobody going to listen to him. All these crazy people walk, ain't nobody going to listen to him. But the men of God have the Spirit of God. And if you don't hear the Spirit of God speaking through the man of God, then you ain't going to hear no tricks. And you ain't going to hear nobody coming from the dead. Because the power of God's Word. It's the greatest power that anybody who wants to be somebody can receive. Somebody give the Lord a hand. So in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, 
You see, God said, for he has made him to be sin for us all, who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. Glory be to God. He took our place. He took our place. He took our sins and he gave us his clothes, his righteousness. Now when God looked at us, he see righteousness. And when he looked at Jesus, he saw sin and he killed him. I thank God for loving me enough to die in my place. Give God a praise. Saints, I got their love for God. How do we show God that we love him? Matthew 22, verses 36 and 7, they asked Jesus, which is the greatest commandment of all? And Jesus said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, and with all of thy mind. For years, for decades, I struggled with that scripture because I couldn't figure out I was going to love God with all of my heart, with all of my soul, and with all of my strength. I try to compare the love that I had for my wife, my children, my mother, and it just didn't fair to be satisfied to the love of God. And as I struggled, God sent me a word. He said, your love for me have nothing to do with feelings. Because you don't feel like going to church, you don't go to church. Your love will be off your mind. It has nothing to do with emotion. Running around the church trying to get God, feel God, has nothing. It has all to do with being committed to whatever His Word has told us to do. Who's 
crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but not I, but Christ lives inside of me. And I'm telling you something now. God just wants to use your body. He don't want you to die. He wants you to live. He wants you to be a blessing yeah. to the body of Christ. That's why he blessed you to be a blessing. He gave you a car to give somebody a ride. He gave you money to help somebody in need. He gave you time to visit the hospitals and the prisons and the jail. He want to use you. That's how you show that you love God. Ain't about praise the Lord, honey, and running around, jumping. It's all about action, y'all. Yeah. And action. It's all about putting up where your mouth is. You understand? So saints towards God is a living thing. Saints towards God is a thing that allows us to be used by God. He called us, and in fact, you have no right to not be trying to do what you want to do. When God says that your body is his temple. And when you said, Lord, I want to be saved, got filled with the Holy Ghost, you were bought with a price. You don't even own you no more. Every day you should be waking up and saying, Lord, what you got me for me to do today? You're a slave. The problem is too many of us have been emancipated. <laughs> we free. And God is saying, no, you're not. I paid the price for you. And it wasn't silver, it wasn't gold, but it was the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So I'm going to this last one and tell you, just about out of here. Saints, I got their love for saints. In 1 John 4 and 20, the Bible says, if a man say that I love God and hated his brother, let me hold up here. Hate him. I don't hate him, I just don't like him. <laughs> the definition of hate is a strong dislike. And if you don't like him, you're way in the red area, area of hating him. He said, if a man says, I love God and hate his brother, God calls you a liar. He said, how can you say you love me who you have not seen and hate your brother who you have seen. Yeah. All of us carry Jesus in us. And man, there is no insignificant, small child of God. In God's sight, all of us are big because he hung up for all of our hang-ups. Everybody it's important. Yeah. Right. So God, as we look to each other, God is saying, before you try to have a vertical relationship with me, you got to have a horizontal relationship with your brothers and your sisters. Yeah. You right. see, I talk like this because I'm no longer an outsider, y'all. You know? I've been here about three, not going four years. I'm here. Yeah. That's my church. Yeah. Right? Tied up and 
tangled up with one another. You don't even know that the person sitting next to you is your cousin. Amen. You don't even know it because you never took time. You keep looking for big people like, I'm hanging with Brother Cole. And the little person next to you got the key to your car, your house, all the blessings that God is holding from you. He's looking at you to see if you have engulfed the principle of love. So we know, and I need to tell you, that, that God don't really need your praise. <laughs> My saints, I'm sorry. He don't need your praise. He said, I will make the rocks rise up and cry out to me. And he doesn't need your money. He said, the earth is the Lord and the fullness of But what he needs is for us to got a love one another. Yeah. Yeah. Wrap up on each other. To look around and look for somebody that needs a hug. Look for somebody that needs to say, maybe you want to go to lunch? Make yourself a project what you come to church for. Come to church to find out how can I put my hand to touch somebody and move them up. And then you can have your dad's DNA. And people look at you and say, man, you look just like your father, folks. You say, I got my father's gene. People should look at you and say, man, you look just like Jesus. And if Jesus was walking on this earth, I would imagine that he would talk this way. He would love this way. He would do the things that you do. Wow, I got my father's DNA. Amen. 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 I'm just like so I think some of you need to check to see who your father is. Because your father really would be displeased with you. <laughs> this God that gave this life for us at a price that we can't even measure expects us to give our lives for each other. And you think I'm just talking in 1 John 3 and 16 it says, Hereby perceive we the love of God. For he laid his life down for us. And then the next part said, Ought we not Lay our lives down for the brother. Yeah. How are you going to lay your life down for me? You don't know my name. Yeah. You don't even talk about dying. And, and, and you don't even know my wife. You don't even know I live. And Sam always said, You don't know nothing about me, but the requirement doesn't change. Man. God wants to be so close that we're able to lay our lives down for one another. We're able to. When they hurt, we hurt. Yeah. When they need, we supply the need. Yeah. And the last thing I said, I'm going to tell you this, that as the human body, the blood is the life of the body. Yeah. And it's so powerful that whenever a part of the body is sick, when you put medicine in your mouth, the blood takes the medicine to that part that's hurt. Oh, Right. In the spiritual body, love is the life of the body. Oh. And when people are hurting and need, there should be something in the love that we take that would take help to an injured part. I, I wish y'all would hear what I'm saying. Amen. God yes. is telling us, yes. you've got your blessings right in your hands. Tonight, you should never be the same. You should be with Superman, actually eyes, looking for somebody in the stand. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord, for being Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of coming before the throne of the Almighty God. Who is man, Lord, that you love us so much? That you invested in us. Now, God, teach us, Lord, how to invest in others. Teach us, Lord, how to be a blessing, Lord, to our pastors, Lord, to the sisters, to the brothers, to anybody, Lord, that you bless us to be able to help. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, as we look to 2020, we look, Lord, with hope in our eyes, Lord. We look, Lord, with an anxiousness, Lord, to do better. In 2020, than we did all of our lives. Take us to that place, Lord, where 
for we can hear you and feel you and sense, Lord, the voice, Lord. Lead us, Lord, to those saints, Lord, that need a touch, Lord. Need a word, Lord. Need a ride, Lord, that need anything. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, we bless you for giving us your life. This is your birthday. And we thank you, Lord, for the life that you've given us for all eternity. We give your name the glory and the praise. We give your name.